Each control room has two to three Numark MP102 CD decks, which are labeled and come up as CD1, CD2, and CD3 on the soundboard. The recorded material on a CD is on the underside, i.e. the side without the printed graphics. Avoid touching this side. Handle CDs by the outside edges and inside ring only. Keep a CD in its case when not in use. Exposure to dust will damage both CDs and players. To load and play a CD, turn the player on using the power button on the left. Press the open slash close button next to the tray to eject the disc tray. Place the disc carefully onto the tray, printed side up. Press the open slash close button to load the disc. Never close the tray by pushing it. This will damage the motor. Select the track you would like to play by rotating the track button. Bring the fader for the CD channel all the way down. Press play on the CD. You can search within a track by turning the large jog wheel. When powered on, the players will default to single track play. For continuous play, press the single button so that the continuous appears in the display. To play a CD, turn on the channel for the CD player you want to use and raise the fader. Press play to start the CD. The display normally indicates the time remaining on the current track. Pressing the time button will switch from time remaining to time elapsed. When the red lights next to the pitch button are off, you cannot adjust the pitch. When they are on, you can press the pitch button once. With the red light on, you can adjust the pitch using the fader on the right side of the unit. If you press and hold the pitch button, you can switch between 8% and 16% pitch control. All control rooms have Technics SL 1200 Mark II turntables, a DJ standard. When handling records, first remove the record from its inner sleeve. Handle vinyl only by the edges and paper label at the center. Place record on the platter. If record is dusty, gently clean with the record brush, slowly moving from the center to the edge of the vinyl. Then place the record on the turntable. Once the record is placed on the turntable, you will need to queue up the track. To do this, turntable channel should be off, turntable power on. The power is located at the black knob at bottom left corner of the turntable. Platter should not be spinning. Choose the correct speed, 33 or 45 RPM, using the buttons under the on-off knob. Press the Q button on the turntable channel on the soundboard. Adjust Q volume using the red knob on the monitor selection channel. Unclasp the tone arm. Lift the tone arm using the lever at the back and slip your index finger under the hook of the tone arm to move the stylus, or needle, to the desired place on the record. Lower the tone arm using the lever. Press start. Let the record play until you've reached the very first note or sound, and then press stop. Rotate the platter, don't touch the record, backwards until you have ex the exact location of the first sound, then back another quarter turn. This compensates for the time it takes the record to play at full speed. Once the record is cued, you will be able to play it. To do this, press the cue switch on the soundboard again to turn off the cue speaker. Bring up the fader on the turntable channel. When you are ready, press the on switch. This automatically starts the turntable. Once you are finished playing your selection, bring the volume fader down. Press the off button on the turntable channel to stop the platter. Lift the tone arm using the lever and carefully move it back to its resting place. Reclasp the tone arm. Carefully lift off the record, being sure to handle it only by the edges. Replace it into its inner and outer sleeves and refile in the music library. For more information, please be sure to visit www.cfrc.ca. Special thanks to Queen's Television for producing this training video.